Hi, in this video I'll share my experience after using LG C9 OLED TV for the past two years. Let's start. As a direct successor to model C8, LG C9 was introduced back in 2019 and among many positive aspects, many will remember it as one of the first TVs to feature full bandwidth HDMI 2.1 ports. The TV got a highly recommended award in my test and has won numerous awards thanks to its great picture quality, list of features and ease of use. I bought the version with a 55 inch screen in 2019, but since I was moving to a new home, the TV was unboxed only in February 2020. It was installed on its stand right from the beginning until the summer of 2021 when I decided to mount it on the wall. Thanks to its slim design the TV looks great on the wall. The living room looks more spacious and I have extra surface to place the center speaker and other things. Now let's talk about picture quality. I was well aware of the high quality images this TV can produce, since I've tested this exact model in 2019. Now after seeing so much content on it and seeing newer models in the meantime, I can say that C9 remains excellent still in 2022. Yes, it is true that in the meantime brighter OLED panels are available and the upcoming C2 model will have it, but I'm not expecting this to be a drastic improvement over the already highly engaging picture C9 delivers. I've tested LED LCD TVs as well as mini LED models that can produce much brighter picture than OLED TVs in general, but for my environment with controlled lighting and my taste, C9 is sufficiently bright. Regardless of your preferences, I would advise bias lighting, ideally a high quality one with color temperature that matches a calibrated screen. For that purpose in 2021, I've installed the MediaFlex 2 meter long LED strip that produces a beautiful light and makes the TV mounted on the wall even better looking. They say the shoemaker has the worst shoes and in a way this is the same for me as a calibrator. No, I haven't calibrated my C9 as soon as it reached 100 working hours, but I would say it was closer to 1000 hours. I did the automatic calibration with Kalman software two times on this unit and I'll tell you why. It was August 2020 when I noticed a thin black line in the top left part of the screen. It was visible on all the videos I've tried, on the interface and even after I did several power cycles and ran the pixel refresher. It was some kind of a failure in this area because when the TV was turning on, on the black screen I could see pixels in that area flash for a fraction of a second and then they would remain turned off. Long story short, the panel had a fault and the screen was replaced. The TV came back completely reset so my calibration was lost. Since I took measurements of the picture modes before and after panel replacement, it was interesting to see the differences. In SDR I've noticed quite a big change and I'll take the expert darkroom preset as an example. White balance got worse, color gamut for some reason was set to native which is unusual for this preset and overall brightness was 20 nits lower. I've noticed the same behavior in other picture presets and the only preset that was similar to the old panel was Technicolor. Strangely, both on old and new panel this preset had quite big deviations in white balance. Though measured brightness in SDR was slightly lower than before, this could be easily adjusted with OLED light control. In HDR I got peak luminance measurements that were expected of C9 series, so the new panel had the same capabilities as the old one, just it seems it was differently configured. Conclusion based on this example, if you get a new panel, Old calibration values probably won't work and it is best to do a new calibration to be sure you're getting the most accurate picture. Coming to permanent image retention or burn in, plain and simply there are no traces of anything on my screen as you can see on this pattern. The panel still has great uniformity without dirty screen effect or variations of hue across the screen. Near black uniformity is standard as on other OLED TVs I've tested. Small variations are visible only on test patterns, not in reality. Variations of brightness due to average picture level or APL were visible only when I was scrolling down the pages in the web browser. 
I haven't noticed this while watching the actual content. Coming to software updates, there were many during these two years, bringing new features like NVIDIA G-Sync, improving picture quality and voice control, and so on. But what created quite a buzz was a recent update that added quite noteworthy improvements. The ability to remove no signal pop-up and control that allows to fine-tune dark areas of the picture, which is an issue for gamers who play games in VRR mode. Considering the model year of the TV, it is quite a surprise to see this kind of an update and I can only hope that LG will continue to do so. Coming to sound quality, this is another strong point of this TV. It is clear and nicely balanced and more than once I was surprised at just how good it sounds. Sometimes I would walk in the living room and without looking at the TV or the AV receiver, I was not sure if the sound was coming from the TV or external speakers. Of course, despite overall great sound and Dolby Atmos support, the quality cannot compare to an external 5.1 audio system. But for casual watching during the day or for watching documentaries or just some videos on YouTube, it sounds really good. WebOS works great. I haven't experienced any slowdowns, resets or lip sync issues during all this time. The TV boots within seconds from standby, just like on the first day, and thanks to quick access buttons on the Magic Remote, I can be in YouTube or some other app within just a few seconds. A big part of good webOS experience comes from using the Magic Remote, mainly its pointer, scroll and built-in microphone. I can quickly jump to my favorite part of the video no matter if it is on Netflix, YouTube or built-in media player. Scroll wheel is great when browsing through the content and built-in microphone for voice assistants and search on YouTube. LG 2019 TVs were the last to support DTS audio in the built-in media player, which is an advantage for those who like to archive their DVD or Blu-ray collection. Newer models are not supporting this audio format, so if you have a collection with DTS sound, you will need to consider an external media player. Even though WebOS doesn't have as many apps as Android TV, for me this is not an issue. I prefer a fast and stable operating system built into the TV, and then if I need some specific app, Android TV Box is a simple solution for that. To answer the question from the title, yes, LG C9 is still a great TV in 2022. It delivers excellent picture and sound quality, its operating system remains fast and has received many new apps in these two years. The usability with Magic Remote is great and all the functions I've tried were working stable. On top of that, the TV supports 4K 120, has low input lag and it can be calibrated to the reference level. Overall, an excellent TV, and if that issue with the thin black line hadn't happened, I wouldn't have any special complaint whatsoever. Because of this, I would keep my eyes open for the 5 year warranty next time I'm buying a new TV. And this brings us to the end of this video, thanks for taking the time to watch it. How long do you have your current TV, and are you happy with it? Let me know in the comment section, and I'll see you in my next video.